Cześć kochani, witamy Was Cześć. serdecznie we wtorek rano. Ania Prusińska i Ela Sengera. I Ela Sengera. E, część druga rozmów na kanapie z terapeutą. I kochani, w tym tygodniu bardzo wyjątkowy odcinek, bo właśnie w tym tygodniu jest e, tak zwany Mental Health Awareness Week, czyli e, week, e, przepraszam, tydzień e, świadomości zdrowia psychicznego. Tak, także możecie odsłuchać nasze, nasze nagranie po angielsku już wkrótce, e, ponieważ za chwilę będziemy je streamować tuż po naszej rozmowie właśnie na nasze kanały, na YouTube, na LinkedIn, tak. tam gdzie można właśnie słuchać nas e, i oglądać po angielsku. Także pozdrawiamy serdecznie. E, Aniu, czy dzisiaj chcesz poprowadzić tę rozmowę również po angielsku? Czy się teraz przestawiamy? Tylko po angielsku. Ja Dobrze, to, to słuchajcie, zaczynamy. Czyli tak, mamy Mental Health Awareness Week. What is Mental Health Awareness Week? Mental Health Awareness Week here in England is a week where there are lots of different uh, events, speeches um, about mental health, raising awareness around mental well-being in children and adults. And today we will talk about how does our mental health impact us and our relationships. And this is a really important topic, I feel, because um, uh, very often we go into, we start a new relationship, we start a new friendship uh, with an expectation that the other person is supposed to make us happier, make us healthier, make us become the better version of ourselves. And very often we do it subconsciously. Um, and my perspective on it is that we could, uh, or we should um, become a little bit more self-aware and take a little more responsibility um, towards um, our mental well-being. Because there is nothing actually more attractive than a partner who is stable, mm -hmm. secure in themselves, confident in themselves, who knows themselves, yeah. knows themselves, knows their expectations from the beginning, and is clearly communicating their expectations, needs, and boundaries. So this is why we are talking about this today, because we all want to ideally become that partner before we can start a relationship with one mm -hmm. like that. Anya, what is your experience as a, as a, you now practice as a psychotherapist for yeah. many years, you are accredited BACP therapist, you work with couples. Um, what is your experience, experience in relation to how do people treat their mental health? when they're in a relationship? What is their perception? What do they do and what do they not do enough of? Mm -hmm. So what you said at the beginning is really so, so important, Ella, and what you are doing as well. Uh, you mm -hmm. prepare people. Yes. Uh, before the relationship, yeah, to really That's right. get into the relationship in the best shape possible, think of themselves, mm -hmm. right? And to really, really have this awareness of what is my difficulty, what is my issue. That is right. Yeah. Um, how am I in mm -hmm. a relationship? What is my mental health in a relationship? But you know, um apologies. I wanted to plug in the I wanted to plug in the microphone, but mm -hmm. actually. We lost some light now. Sorry, I'm just going to go back to it. Okay, sorry about that. Please continue. All right. So um, then I am usually working with people um, who are in a crisis. Mm -hmm. right? So the couple in a crisis is coming mm -hmm. to the clinic and they want quick fix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And most of the time, uh, either one of them, but usually both of them have serious emotional difficulties, um, problems with emotional regulation. So they are not self-aware. Yeah. Completely not okay. self-aware and neglecting their mental health most of the time. That's well, why okay. they are in the place where they are. Of course. Well, I have a question here that springs to mind straight mm -hmm. away. What would you say is roughly the percentage of people like that? 
Mm. From if you were, what is the percentage of people who are emotionally not stable, mentally not very well? Yeah. In all of the people you meet. So look at the divorce statistics, and you will know <laughs> the percentage. It's huge, really. So it's like over fifty percent. Oh my gosh! Like well, the ones that you have in statistics, but there are very many couples who never um, get married. Yeah. They are just couples. It's not registered and they split, right? Or they change partners very often. Yeah, yeah. So this is really a huge percentage of people who really do not know what to do in a relationship. Mm -hmm. They completely don't know what to do with themselves in a relationship, how to talk to a partner. Yeah. You know, we have this... It's a crisis, isn't it? it, it is we are huge. talking about a crisis, guys. Crisis of identity, uh, of our identity in a relationship. Yeah. And and this is such a big topic, isn't it? So yeah, it's huge. That's that's what you are doing, Ella. Um, how you can see yourself in a relationship in relation to the other person, like how you um like find the love of your life, right? Yeah. So you need to set yourself up not for the failure but for success from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. You don't want give yourself the best. You give yourself the best that. chances for a healthy, happy yeah. relationship by looking after yourself. Yeah, right. Of course. And how can we look after ourselves? Give me three ideas. Um, of how can we do that? You know, first of all, like this self awareness. So very many people live in constant rush. You know, mm -hmm. especially we live in a big city, you know, mm -hmm. you can see this. Even in the street, everyone is rushing somewhere, running around, and you don't have this time for yeah. self reflection. Yeah. Even at the end of the day, you just need sure. at least few minutes mm. to self-reflect. How how was I today? What kind of people what happened I met? Today? What happened today in my relationships with others? Yeah, not only my partner, my children and other people. Yeah. And, and looking at our reactions yeah. to what happens. Yes. Guys, this is where the true wisdom is and the gold. The gold is hidden in our uh, reactions to things that happen to us and around us. Yeah. Because that information, how we react, gives us an information that is what is truly important to us. What truly matters to us? What are our values, right? So if you had a situation at work where you have being disrespected by your boss or your colleague, and you had a really strong reaction, or perhaps you were given a new project that is really boring and you really cannot stand the sound of it. Mm -hmm. This is an information for you that you are uh, you want to do creative work, yes. for example. Yes. And we have to look for information about ourselves mm -hmm. in those events to yes. understand ourselves better. Because once we understand yes. ourselves better, we will understand other people better. So definitely, I, I always um, tell my clients, look, uh, go where your tears are. You know, mm. you're sad when you cry. It gives you an information. Yeah, yeah. I, I was sad today. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. say I, I, I've been sad the whole day. Entire yeah, day. yeah. And I'm still sad. We don't run away from it. No. We go. We stay with that feeling. Yes. I'm angry. I'm sad. Yeah. I have these difficult feelings. So, if you do not um look at these feelings, you don't know where your wound is. Yeah. You can find your wound by tracing these feelings your lack of satisfaction, your mm -hmm. unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And this is like the clue of taking care of yourself. To be exactly. self aware of what's going on on emotional level uh, with you uh, around other people in relation to other people and in relation to yourself. Yeah, correct. Uh, listen, guys, I've had the situation. I'm going to open up here and tell you something very authentic. I had situations many times in my past where I heard a romantic song and I started crying yeah. and sometimes it was in the most random situations mm -hmm. like circumstances for example brushing my teeth in the evening mm -hmm. and a, a romantic song comes on the radio and, and I hear it and I start crying and you know and at the beginning uh, yes I know and at the beginning I was like what is wrong with me 
right? This was some time, a few years back. But then I started, what I started doing, I started sitting down yeah. and I started just crying properly mm -hmm. and listening to the song, grabbing a tissue and allowing myself to cry. <laughs> and then I realized, why am I crying? Yeah. I realized that. It got to your heart. To your it wounds. got to my heart. It got to the void. Mm -hmm. Yes, to the empty space. Yeah. to the loneliness to what the are you missing um so at that point i felt that my inner child mm -hmm. was not healed yeah. and my inner child really needed to experience unconditional love okay and being noticed being yeah. being accept, love. accepted loved and noticed and not mm -hmm. ignored mm -hmm. And so I felt that, that I I was I was earning I was yearning to have a partner for most of my life mm -hmm. that would give me that attention mm -hmm. that would notice me that would hear me yeah, and nice. and not just talk over me mm -hmm. or like you know not let me finish as most of my relationships were, where I was with someone really who had no patience, mm -hmm. but someone who would ignore like it. Experience. Yeah. 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 I love what you said. Like, first of all, you thought something is wrong with me. Yeah. But guys, that's exactly what is right, because you're unconscious. Your heart is talking to you and trying to tell you what's going on. Like the this child, is the yeah. way the subconscious is speaking to us. Yes. Yes. So listen to the how list. valuable is that? Mm -hmm. How valuable is that? How how many of you have a meeting with your subconscious mind per week or in the in a month mm -hmm. where your subconscious mind tells you, hey, you know what, Ella, you really screwing up your life by doing this thing. Mm -hmm. You should do this thing instead. Yeah. None of us have a meeting with our subconscious that way. Our subconscious is quiet, gives us messages in a quiet way, through the moments of weakness, through an experience with someone who disrespects us, through an unpleasant event and through a happy event. That's how our we activate our subconscious mind mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. So we these sometimes the message can be very harsh and life can kick your ass really hard. Mm. But if you don't listen to yourself, you will really get into troubles. So yeah. or later in so, your relationships, correct. in in your love life, in your work life, everywhere, you will get to the point that it will kick back. There's so no so other way around. Correct. So this is golden. What Anya said. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep ignoring your subconscious, you will tell yourself it's your destiny. Yes. Your life is your destiny. Uh, and there is an English saying, actually, uh, and it's beautiful, and I don't know exactly how it goes, but it's something along the lines that um, as long as you ignore your subconscious mind, uh, it will uh, you will keep telling yourself that the life you experience is your destiny. Yeah. And it's rubbish. It's not your destiny. Mm -hmm. You just have to stop ignoring what your subconscious mind and what your intuition is telling you about people, events, and your value system. Mm -hmm. You have to look for and activate inner wisdom inside you that will guide you towards healthy and happy relations with others. Yeah. So this is the self-awareness. Self-awareness. You you really like you can hear this here and there, but this is really the message of this kind of days, this kind of celebrations to really understand what does that mean. So in a relationship, it means that you take care of yourself. When you self-reflect, when you know who you are, uh, when you try to understand who your partner is, and then you can create a secure, safe, happy, good, happy relationship, relationship with your partner. And you can both really push through life together Mm -hmm. uh, achieving your dreams your goals and not being miserable yeah what are the let's to summarize this bit that we just discussed what are four most 
most important things each one of us can do independently mm -hmm. to uh, give ourselves best chances for good mental health before we start a relationship but before the relationship so for sure i would say trying to find a therapist if you know that you've never done any inner work before okay. you you should find some kind of therapist you should find a coach mentor uh, do some self reflection especially if you're struggling right? journey, when yeah, you don't whatever. know where to yes. when you don't know where to start because some people are just looking for like a simple yeah. um simple um so let's say we have a healthy person yeah. with no major traumas no major um, imbalances yes what can they do to look after their mental health mm -hmm. before so that it positively impacts their future relationship mm -hmm. listen to yourself like what we've uh, just discussed together so listening to yourself uh, journaling self-reflecting talking to people about what you are experiencing not being on your own alone uh, like balancing your life so when you have life balance it's much easier to yeah to start healthy relationship as well mm -hmm. take care of yourself of your needs uh, asking yourself many questions that's what therapy is as well so we are basically asking you questions guys mm -hmm. uh, so you can do the same for yourself mm -hmm. you can ask yourself questions each day and every day like, what do i need what is important for me? How do I want to live my life? Mm -hmm. So very many of my clients, there are some some of young people really, they have no meaning or no non-direction in life. How can you create a proper no, relationship? No purpose. If you have mm -hmm. no purpose, you don't know mm -hmm. what you want to do. You're just floating, right? Yeah. You're looking for another person to give me your life sense. Yeah. yeah. That is the worst thing you can do. That's where we started and on your yeah and honestly guys i see those people on the street every day i can spot them from miles away mm -hmm. and i can and i don't mean this in a bad way i honestly don't mean this in a bad day, uh, way i just want to highlight that i see lots of people who are almost pointlessly walking around the streets looking for excitement looking for yeah. attraction looking for a quick fix looking to fill a void mm -hmm. and they many of them don't even have a and of course i know at some point we all don't know what we want to do in life mm -hmm. but it's important to have a stable job or a stable career for the purpose of having a purpose and if you don't have a job or a career spending time on doing something you love where you can contribute to the lives of others in a good way mm -hmm. is a nice place to start whether mm -hmm. it's baking cookies uh, or painting uh, painting something mm -hmm. or singing songs or playing guitar no, that's so you know crucial that you're not anything doing this for, your, for yourself only that's what you said that you you're building doing this for the, others building this yeah. independence but yeah but this Positive contribution to other people's life is very, very valuable to your uh, mental well-being and will also give you a perfect uh, foundation to staying independent to your partner when you are in a relationship. Because you want to be independent. You mm. don't want to be in a codependent relationship where you rely on their money, on yeah. their love, on their time, on their advice, because without them, you are nobody. Mm. Okay? That's not healthy self-esteem and that's not healthy self-worth. And it's where all the problems start, pretty much. So we are working by listening to our needs by listening to yourself by journaling by spending time on the things you love mm -hmm. uh, perhaps also by doing physical exercise since it's yes. mental health awareness week and the theme is get active this year yes. it's important body, to mention so, yeah. to take care of your body and stay connected to your body so that you are not just attractive but you are healthy, you are healthy, you have a healthy habit in your life, 
that whenever you feel and it's a de-stress de-stressor yeah, right that's really amazing. physical exercise is the best antidepressant mm -hmm. and the cheapest one and the best de-stressor you can get it teaches you so much you know of resilience mm -hmm. and it teaches you that you can actually do more than you think yeah because when you start uh, these exercises it's really hard at the beginning yeah that Correct. you are not in a shape, you're, you're not that strong. But when you start doing this, you learn that you are capable of really doing a lot. And it gives you also a sense of order in your life. You have to like somehow also be able to fit in this into your lifestyle, this care for yourself. Exactly. The form of caring for yourself. Exactly. So do not for one second think that when you're single, you should be running. And when you're in a couple, you should stop running. Yeah. Or do you, do not think for one second that just because you've got a boyfriend now or a new girlfriend, you should stop doing things you love. That's yeah. absolute rubbish. And if you ever end up with a partner who tells you that you should stop doing those things because it's nicer to be together, that's a big red flag. Yeah. And you should pay attention to that. Because nobody is supposed to tell you how you should be spending your time when you're doing your healthy thing for yourself. Yeah. It's your mental health. It's your happiness. And you are responsible for it. Yeah, what's also amazing in, in physical exercises that we can learn from is like being very consistent and persistent with pushing mm. through difficulties. And you can also push through difficulties in your life the same way as you push through physical exercises you, you, you have to get a bit outside of yourself like outside of your comfort zone it's not comfortable to exercise mm -hmm. the same as it's not comfortable to get out of your comfort zone yeah. do something else in your life like outside of your relationship mm -hmm. even for example mm -hmm. not relying on your partner only if it's uh, if we are talking about codependent relationships so you have to push through a bit uh, on a physical way, on an emotional uh, way to level up, to mm. just level up, to feel better in your life. Because, mm. you know, some people will not do that and that's okay. Yeah. If they feel okay in their life as they are, Yeah. not everyone has to push through and go somewhere. If they feel that it's okay. Not everybody honest, needs to but, run a yeah. marathon, right? Yeah, exactly. Not, not everybody needs to run a marathon. Not everybody has to go for a 10 mm. miles walk every day. Um, if they do yoga instead for 15 minutes every day or they go out and walk in nature for 20 minutes while they listen to a podcast, that's their way of doing it. But most important thing here is that we continue those healthy habits while we are in a relationship and both of us, yeah. not just one of us. So not um not just one partner yeah. that is maybe more forward and more direct and he or she uh, has always done it, so they're going to continue doing it and we are not allowed to do it. And no. it's very inspiring when, when you, you can see that your Correct. partner is taking care of yourself, Correct. in shape, you know, yeah. doing something for yourself. It's very attractive. It's very attractive. It's very yeah. attractive. It can be uh, contagious. We really want to do that as well. It's yes. Really nice yes. Like Correct. Cooking together, yeah. meals, going out together, and like we getting the bikes. You know, whatever something physical. It's really nice to do together as well. Yes, I love that. And actually, it builds intimacy and trust yeah. in the relationship yeah. because, um, look, by dividing the responsibilities so much between men and women the woman does this and the man does mm -hmm. that and maybe i'm the mom so i always do the cooking and you're the dad so you do the school drop-offs or uh, you know it's not allowing much space for connection but when we are um when we are doing physically active together or when we literally just go and carry bags from the car, from the shop, mm -hmm. and then we cook together. It's that. such a Amazing. simple uh, task, yes, mm -hmm. and it builds intimacy mm -hmm. between us. People forget that these easiest things, these easiest are things, for us. we don't have to 
Okay, we will have to go out uh, every two days to the restaurant to yeah. feel connected. No, and spend and spend three hundred pounds on a yeah. dinner somewhere yeah. really posh, yeah. where you know uh, we would much rather see our partner cooking yeah. for us. No, I've, I've heard and this, serving yeah, the exactly. dinner. This is amazing that we can do something simple that doesn't cost us that much money, but it shows that we care about each other, we think about each other, we yeah. attach and connect. For example, I remember the story um, that I heard from one of um, my clients that uh, she said that she knew when her husband stopped loving her and caring for her because they got this small ritual that he always left a uh, like piece of toothpaste or on her toothbrush when he was going out to work. Oh so wow! He put, so that's that small symbol. And it stopped. And it stopped doing. And he stopped doing that. You know. And mm -hmm. she knew that something is off, something is wrong, and then they tried to fix that relationship because he mm -hmm. he stopped to care on this simple level, even mm -hmm. yeah. So this was really well, and and sometimes we stop caring when we feel the other person is not caring back mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. we want to experience it. So it's important to remember that it's a two way street, and it it takes two to tango. You know, it's it's. I'm looking after my mental health and our relationship, you looking after your mental mm -hmm. health and our relationship. And we allow each other space yeah. to be independent in our pursuits, in our careers, in our opinions, in the way we view the world. Uh, but at the same time, we give and take. And that dynamic between give and take is very important Mm -hmm. And it can be imbalanced mm -hmm. when we have this limiting belief that we should be doing this or we shouldn't be doing that. Or just because we were doing something for years, mm -hmm. now it's their turn or something like that. So, so you know what I mean? Out of the, the comfort zone as a couple of us, yes. so not only ourselves. But sometimes... Uh, this topic is huge because yeah here <laughs> forever and we have uh, to finish now because yeah. we've been doing this for half an hour yeah so maybe, but maybe it's been lovely time. talking to you guys today and um we would like to invite you to the next meeting with the therapist on the sofa and that will happen next month uh, and during that meeting we will talk about building boundaries in a relationship how to set and maintain healthy boundaries mm -hmm. to become uh, and stay interdependent. Mm -hmm. Okay, take care for now. See you next time. See you, bye. Bye-bye.